Welcome to episode 78 of the Guitar Builders Basics video podcast. Luthiers tips, tricks and training from me, Ben Crow at Crimson Guitars in the UK. It is chilly today. It's uh, first thing on a Monday morning. Uh, the workshop is just starting to get uh, up to speed. I can hear clamps and tools and machines and things slowly starting up. The funny thing is that uh, I can sort of identify by the sound of the machine who's using, who's doing what for the most part. And uh, for example, <clears throat> on Friday I had uh, my, my, my apprentice Tom, apprentice Tom rather than office Tom, and uh, he was making a five millimeter thick veneer. And uh, the, the planar thickness, uh, basically we should have actually um, used the, the, luthiers, the greatest luthiers trick ever. Check out that video if you haven't already. Uh, the masking tape and Subaru trick and glued it to a bigger board, but you know, we were just putting it through. And the, 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 <laughs> this mahogany just disintegrated. And from the other side of the workshop, my brain goes, oh, there's something wrong. Let's go run away and see if, uh, if Tom is still alive. Are you alive? Yes. Are you bleeding? No. Good. Carry on. Uh, pretty much exactly how I treat my, uh, my four-year-old and six-year-old. Don't bleed on the rug! Did you bleed on the rug? Yes, Daddy. <clears throat> it's Monday morning. Good morning. Um, all right, I have got uh, a news. What news? What news? There's, uh, we're nearly hitting 30,000 subscribers. On the day we do, there's going to be a giveaway. So uh, I'm going to be setting up an email address that you can email. Um, and you'll also be able to email questions for the show uh, to that email address. I haven't made it yet because I haven't had time to sit at the computer. Uh, we are almost at parity. The, uh, the new nut slotting files, here is some, uh, some metal. I need to figure out an easier way of actually cutting the teeth in those, but uh, for now they're handmade. And uh, we are just about caught up with the huge amount of orders that you wonderful, wonderful people placed <laughs> between November and uh, now. Uh, it has been utterly, utterly crazy. We've had three months of, of chaos. I've had to take on, well, I've taken on four new staff in the last couple of months just to try and deal with, with everything that's been going on. Um, so anyway, we're, we're, we're back. We will be completely caught up by the end of this week if, uh, if all goes according to plan and nobody injures themselves. Again with the blood. Now, <coughs> this is a very interesting question. Uh, last week we talked a little bit about tone wood and tone and sound and all of that. It seems to come up almost every single day. Uh, and so that was probably in podcast 76, I think. Uh, anyway, this question is uh, from Guillaume Lawton uh, on YouTube. He says, why do you think we still use wood when building guitars? Uh, I think there are many materials now that are much more resonant uh, I would uh, be interested in your thoughts. Now, tradition. <laughs> End of podcast. Uh, wood is wonderful. Wood is beautiful. It is tactile. It is sexy. It is just lovely. And it is infinite in its variety. I, I almost want to make up... I, I almost want to extemporize a poem right here and now. And I'm just that poetic. However, those are the feelings and those are the reasons why most or the bulk of instruments are made with wood. You know, it's, it's, it's a lovely, lovely material. Uh, can you see me looking around? There's, I've got a Parker in the room. I want to pull that out as well, but you know what Parkers look like. <sighs> wood is beautiful. It is tactile. It's warm. It's easy to work. It doesn't necessarily smell too much when you're using it. And, and it's traditional. So, you know, we've got, and again, I'm sort of kind of wax lyrical here. We, we've got an unbroken line between today's guitar and the guitars made by Stradivari 300 plus years ago. I'm very not, not that hot on mathematics. Um, you know, three or four hundred years ago, they were making instruments that looked similar to guitars. Even longer in the Renaissance, you're talking, what, in the 1500s, they were making lutes out of wood. And hold on. 
Okay, let's see if I can rip this off the wall. I don't think I can. <laughs> oh, typical. What I'm currently doing, for those of you who cannot see, is trying desperately to untangle an incredibly dusty um, Neapolitan mandolin. Now, this cedar top is not original. My father um, put that on. Uh, oh, let me know. I need to fix it. I really do. When, when my children are slightly less destructive. Uh, anyhow, so if you look at this beautiful, beautiful instrument, is it not beautiful? Is it not just? <laughs> it's just lovely. Now, this same thing made out of carbon fiber could possibly sound louder would certainly have better tuning stability. Um, it would look very nice. <laughs> you know, I'm a bit of a sucker for carbon fiber. Um, it, it's, it's lovely stuff. I just noticed this has got bar frets in it. It's got solid brass bars instead of uh, tanged things. It's just, yeah, lovely and old and, and beautiful, apparently. Oh, I can't see the. I can't see it. Anyway, it's very old. Now, that is that is lovely, and it's sexy. This is also actually fairly lovely, and fairly sexy. Um, and you know, I say that because hell, I made it. I'm just trying to get. Uh, you can see I've done all the calves and the curves, and uh, and in this particular case. Yeah, you know, the headstock and the tuners, the tuning heads at least. Um, now this is an instrument that I built for golf raps bass player Charlie Jones in 07. Long time ago. And this one failed because, can you see the bend in that neck? You know, it is just not strong enough. The body, however, <laughs> Now, I went on to make him one with a Perspex headstock and a timber neck and a Perspex body. Stunning, beautiful, amazing. Um, I had made a timber prototype, and the timber prototype with the same hardware and pickups, etc., next to the Perspex one, the Perspex one blew it away. Utterly, totally, completely, 100%. I'm going to refocus on myself just in case I'm out of focus. <laughs> um, the Perspex one totally blew me away, sonically. It was amazing. However, it's also two, three, or four times heavier, which is why I've done all of this, uh, all of this carving. Uh, the carving process of this, I suspect, is probably going to give me cancer in about 30 years. It, it, you know, this is before I was worrying about things such as uh, fumes and gas masks and the like. And it wasn't very pleasant to work with. It smelled like strawberries a little bit. Um, I also made a red Perspex instrument with a timber neck for Susie Sue's guitarist. Anyway, and uh, it was red and it smelled like strawberries as well. Um, or maybe I'm just weird and smell strawberries randomly in the workshop. Carbon fiber, dust guitars. They are uh, an ultra high end uh, UK maker of very, very cool guitars. They use a western red cedar body uh, in a skin of carbon fibre. Parker guitars, a lot of their better instruments are made with carbon fibre and resin fretboards. Obviously, um, oh my goodness gracious me, now I've just forgotten the name of the company. Status, Status. They've been making carbon fibre and, 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 and resin based necks and bodies and all sorts of stuff for 20 or 30 years. The same can be said for Steinberger. Ned Steinberger, who wasn't even a guitarist, he, he just fell into the whole designing of basses things because he happened to meet somebody. <laughs> I can't remember the name now. Uh, I, I, I am so bad with names. Um, Steinberger has been making composite instruments also for 20 or 30 years. Some of these people are big, big names. And 
Yet the mainstream, the public consciousness, these people want an ebony fretboard, a mahogany neck and body and a maple top. Or if they're feeling poor, they're going to go for a strat. Excuse me, all your strat lovers. But the materials are cheap. And they're going to have older. Or, hey, base wood might be slightly better. Uh, let's go for a base wood or, or whatever it happens to be. Um, and a, a bit of rock maple. And now those materials weren't chosen for the tone. Those materials were chosen because they were close to the workshop, cheap, readily available and easy to cut down. You know, we use in violin making European maple, which is um, often also called sycamore. So if you think that flamed sycamore is, is inferior to American flamed maple or whatever, um, that's utter bull. Um, it's, you know, it's what's been used on violins, etc., for forever. And we use spruce that's grown in the mountains. And I've got some spruce that was grown on, a, on the grounds of a stately home near me that um, blew down in a storm. Yeah, it's wide-grained. I'm going to use it for some bodies and stuff. And it's got huge knots in it. Uh, it's probably going to sound OK. But um, yeah, we use really, really nice locally sourced woods. Really nice, but still basically locally sourced. Um, I've, I have tangented, I have I, tangented, is that a word? I've gone off on one entirely. Um, Fender, even Gibson, everybody looks for a wood that is easily um, obtainable. It might be international nowadays because hey it's easy to get stuff from abroad hey I'm gonna buy a container load of hell I could order a container load of timber and have it delivered to my door and go oh, wow I've got a container of wood what do I do now um, it's the world we live in it is also arguable that carbon fiber is something that's easier it comes on a roll you know one 50 meter roll is enough to make probably 25 guitars probably 50 guitars you know, and you can buy a 50 meter roll for, for a grand or so, and, and hey, woohoo, <laughs> this is carbon fiber, it's modern material. Um, I, say, I say that in quotation marks because, hey, we've been using it for 25 or 30 years. Uh, but you will then also have to buy resins and hardeners and releasing agents and make fiberglass molds or, or whatever. And <sighs> fun, possibly, smelly. Um, I'm, I'm not, I do have some carbon fiber stuff to play with um, and I'm going to do it and I also want to play with uh, resin infused fretboards for example and, uh, and all sorts of other stuff, resin infused um, carving mallets and the like for our tool, tool making side of the business. But I need to finish building my spray booth first and have extraction hoods and, and, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I think this workshop might even be too small for that sort of stuff. Now, and that is the other thing. Anybody, you, we have 30,000 subscribers nearly, something like one and a half, two thousand people are going to see this video within 24 hours of me speaking these words. Out of you, two thousand people for example, I want to bet that 90% of you have at some point in the not too distant past gone to a local timber yard or builder's merchant or something and bought a bit of wood and taken it home and started making a guitar. And you just cannot do that. You can't walk down to the local hardware store, buy a ream of, a ream, buy a, a sheaf of carbon fiber, whatever it is, and uh, just to set up to build one carbon fiber instrument, even if you're only skinning a, wood, uh, a wooden instrument that you then make, um, that you have already made out of timber, it's going to cost you two or three hundred quid just to, just to set up, just to get the, the resins in and the hardeners and the, the releasing agents and the, all, all of the ancillary crap that you seem to need. Whereas in order to build this guitar, in order to make this, all I really, really need are a few hand tools, a workbench, um, and the ability to sharpen those hand tools. Um, you know, I can go down, I can, <laughs> in fact, can I tell you what? This is rather fortuitous. This instrument, this top, this lovely figured elm top, used to be a crappy homemade um, coffee table. 
I bought this coffee table for one pound from a local car boot sale because, hey, that's a pretty piece of wood. So, yeah, from a local car, car boot sale, I went and bought this one pound thing, which is now on a 2,000 pound guitar. I'm gonna have to offer the guy a little bit of a, um, um, uh, a discount now that he knows. Um, however, you can pick up this wood anywhere and you can make your guitar. So, so there are the two main reasons. We tend to use timber because it's easy, it's cheap, and it's traditional. And uh, the days are coming when a 3D printer, and it's, they're arguably cheap already now, actually, to be honest, and it's a plastic instrument. And we already know that plastic is resonant. Plastic sounds good. 3D printers nowadays are starting to print um, composites of metal and and paper type things. So you know you could conceivably print yourself um, something with a print, 3D printer like that, something that will act just like a, a, a top with soft sections and hard sections and soft sections and hard sections to, to act like spruce, for example. And you know, I'm not saying I'm not excited, I am. But I always think that there is gonna be a case for a flamed maple top on a, on a mahogany body and, and you know, Wood. It's just amazing. Anyway, this has gone on a little bit longer than I was planning, and and I am going to say goodbye. Thank you very, very much for watching.